o wygłoszenie swojego referatu panią Martę Rachlewicz z Uniwersytetu Warszawskiego, która zaprezentuje nam problematykę związaną z porcelaną Fanny Gart i Efi Hegerman Linderkron. Linderkron. Nie przekręcam, zapomniana wirtuozeria duńskiego duetu. Proszę. Czy słychać mnie dobrze? Okay, I'm going to speak in English. Last year's call for presentations for this conference, focusing on neglected fantasy artists, felt like a unique opportunity to present two remarkably skilled, highly original, yet somewhat forgotten female porcelain artists, Fanny Gada and Effie Hegemann Lindenkrone. I consider the art of Gada and Hegemann, executed for Bing Gronde factory, one of the most remarkable phenomena in the history of Danish ceramics. Because of their rare craftsmanship in modeling and fired porcelain, and the designing outstanding underglaze decoration. Strangely though, not a single monograph on the two has been published to date, and no retrospective exhibition organized. Completely unknown in Poland, they're only marginally discussed in Denmark. Previously part of the private Royal Copenhagen Museum, the vast collection of Gade and Hegemann works and archives was given to Denmark's Kremerhus Keramik Museum in 2010. In that regard, I have to thank Kremerhus for granting me generous access to all these newly acquired materials, most of which have never been publicly displayed. This made it possible to conduct a multi-layered analysis that uses dozens of objects, hundreds of original drawings, as well as an Arbeitsbo, a professional register of unique pieces that Gade and Hegemann shared. My presentation will consist of three uneven parts. First up will be a short introduction on the key moments in the artist's professional careers. The second and most significant part will focus on the technique used by Gade and Hegemann, presenting both the creation and design process, as well as the sources from which the artists drew their inspiration. In the last part, the two artists will be placed in a broader context by giving you a brief overview of the artistic education of women and their employment in Danish porcelain factories. Finally, I will hopefully provide food for thought in my conclusions. After having met at Taina Kunstindustrieskolen Fokfina, the first artistic school in Denmark that aimed at educating designers for industry, Gaden Hegemann established a lifelong professional as well as personal relationship. In 1880, Hegemann entered the school as a student, and at the time, Fanny Gade was one of her teachers. Another teacher at the tiny school was Pietro Kron, who later became the artistic leader of the Copenhagen person factory being a Grondale. In 1886, Kron hired Gade and Hegemann at the factory for designing and painting of the famous Heron service that was supposed to turn heads at the Nordic exhibition in Copenhagen of 1888, as well as the World Exhibition in Paris in 1889. The service was a showpiece of the factory's skill in employment of the newly developed underglaze painting technique. It is important to note that the late 1880s and early 1890s marked a time of fierce competition between Royal Copenhagen and Bingo Grondale for the mastering of underglaze decoration of porcelain. After fulfilling the ambitious Heron assignment, Gade and Hegemann continued working at Bingo Grondale throughout their lifetimes. They shared an atelier at the factory, enjoying remarkable artistic freedom, and no later than in May 1890, they started designing and executing their own local nature-inspired, underglaze-painted, sculpted decoration for numbered and signed, costly, unique pieces. I will now turn to the creation and design process. As one of the aims of this conference is to cover technological issues, it is important to note that Gade and Hegemann's outstanding craftsmanship was the main reason for the two artists being critically acclaimed, both within Denmark 
as well as abroad. Their vases were a true sensation during 1900 and 1925 world exhibitions in Paris. Their artistic ability and drive to master the most challenging techniques gave birth to a group of unique, individually designed pieces that feature underglaze painting and relief, and, in most cases, open work decoration. These vases are the focal point of my research interest. Katten Hegemann's main artistic medium was porcelain, of the composition that hasn't changed much over time up until today. An examination of the group of vases that took place in June 2013 at Royal Copenhagen's premises, together with analysis of the professional register, allowed to discover and confirm the different techniques used by God and Hegemann. It turned out that they indeed combined in a creative way a number of difficult shaping techniques, for example, throwing on potter's wheel, freehand modeling of individual elements, cutting through the porcelain body, and that they mastered the art of underglaze decoration, enabling the creation of delicate tones. The construction of a general shape of the vessel was achieved in two main ways, either by throwing on potter's wheel or by casting. Some vases were thrown, like this one, which can be verified in a description left by the artists themselves in the register. However, as we know, parts of the register cover exclusively the years of 1890 to 1896, and then 1902 to 1910. Only a few vases among the ones remaining in public collections can be matched with the artist's notes. Otherwise, whether or not a piece was thrown can be established by analyzing characteristic marks left by the potter's finger on the inside of the vessel if it's not decorated inside, of the, or um, the uniqueness of the shape. On the other hand, although some shapes were cast multiple times from the same mold, like the ones presented here, a cast piece would always have a smooth, undecorated surface. Subsequently, for each piece, cast or thrown, the decoration was uniquely produced every time, based on individual design and in a freehand modeling technique. Some of the pieces were completely hand-built sculptures that had lost all their practical value. Indeed, I would say that the artistic development of God and Hegemann marks a shift in Danish ceramics, moving from producing decorative objects for everyday use to producing functionless pieces of art. The shift was fostered by the revival of craftsmanship and the creative interest in the properties of material. As they progressed in their artistic careers, modeled and pierced decorative pieces painted in underglaze colors came to constitute Gades and Hegemann's signature work. The relief was modeled by hand, individually for each piece. In order to do that, the artist let the shaped vase dry to a leather hard stage at which point they could use knives and wooden tools. For example, sticks to cut, incise, carve, file and smoothen the raw porcelain body. The use of these tools would allow creating a high relief decoration of multi-layered overlapping leaves. The relief effect could be further enhanced by attaching separately model fragments, like a butterfly wing, wing or a leaf, to the already carved surface. Additional modeling was also possible after the biscuit firing of the piece. After some attempt at modeling the biscuit fired pieces from no later than 1892, Effie Hirman Lincoln makes mention of her first attempt at working with raw porcelain body in February 1895, and this, uh, this mention is shown here. What is remarkable and a sign of both women's true talent is the fact that only a few years later, during the World Exhibition in Paris in 1900, they exhibited large open work vases, examples of their already developed, recognizable style. And this is an example. As regards underglaze painting, this technique 
naturally offered a very limited range of colors that consisted essentially of shades of blue, gray, green, and brown. Those were applied in liquid or, more often, powder form with a brush or sprayed on. After the design for the decoration had been transferred to the porcelain vessel using a pierced template, like the one shown here. Rubbing the powdered pigment enabled creating very delicate misty tones <coughs> that became a distinguishing feature of Danish porcelain. Next to the traditional range of underglass colors, Gade and Hegemann furthermore extensively employed the so-called Yanoxid glazur, or iron oxide glaze, that created a dark brown metallic effect visible in the bottom part of this, of this bowl. Another signature element of Danish porcelain of that time, also employed by Gad and Hegemann in their works, is transparent shiny glaze. The two artists consciously used this to enhance the desired decorative effect of their works. This can be observed especially in Hegemann's vases decorated with her favorite seaweed motif, where, as Ebbe Sadlin has noted in his account of 17th birthday of Hegemann. The shine of the glaze created an effect of wetness on the surface as if the object has just been taken out of water. The selection of techniques used by the two artists was full of challenges they had to undergo during their everyday work. One of them was the difficulty of underglaze painting. Firstly, one could not see the actual color of the underglaze paint before the vessel was fired. The technique therefore required a lot of imagination. Secondly, liquid paint would be quickly absorbed by the biscuit porcelain body, similar to the watercolor technique, and could not be layered, therefore requiring quick and confident brush strokes. The powder pigment could at the same time only be applied using the difficult rubbing and scraping technique. In case of Kad and Hegemann, another challenge was handling brittle, unfired porcelain, which calls for a high degree of skill, as pressing it too hard would simply crush the vessel. Taking all this into account, it is not surprising to see that the pierced pieces decorated with high relief and underglazed colors would often take around 60 hours to complete, while more sizable pieces could take up to 210 hours of the artist's time, just like this one, Effie Hegemann in the Krona Aquatic Vase from 1908. What makes Garda and Hegemann all the more interesting to study is the fact that a dual innovation reached its climax in their works the aforementioned focus of craft on craftsmanship and shift towards native flora-inspired motifs, common among the fin de siècle artists. As regards the second point, the two artists indeed drew all inspiration for the projects directly from nature, local or the kind that could be found in Danish botanical gardens. Towards that nature, they developed an intimate, one could say, and personal attitude. What interested them was a subtle tone of natural colors, the changing shapes of a plant during its lifetime and its size. They would, often together, go on trips to the Danish countryside during summer months, where they would make numerous drawings of flowers, leaves, trees, or fruit. The drawings were executed with the precision of a botanist and a keen eye for detail, using either pencil or pencil, pencil combined with watercolor. Indeed, the drawings executed in pencil feature detailed descriptions of the disposition of colors, while close contact with nature can be observed when looking at notes featured on the drawings, like for example, one third of the natural size. After this integrated muscle, or Fourth of July, interrupted by rain. Some drawings also feature names of the plants, and more often than not, a folder of drawings looks like a botanical atlas. In fact, 
Their study of nature was not a mere mechanical step in the process of creating a floral decoration for a porcelain vessel. It was also an art in its own right. Many of the drawings of nature are signed with dates and names of the places in Denmark where the drawings were made, which allows to track the route chosen by the artists. Among the visited locations were towns by the seaside, by the Kattegat Sea, Bautahoi, Tisvilde, Röhrvi, where Fanny's brother Harald had the summer house, finally Sundvi and Bloven by the North Sea. A visit of the two artists to the coast of southern Jutland in the summer of 1894 is particularly interesting. Two drawings namely exist that feature a nettle-leafed bellflower captured from two angles, as shown here. As it turns out, they were made on the same day, the 16th of July. One of them was made by Gade and the other by Hegemann. This shows how close, or even inseparable, the two artists were and how their professional lives intertwined with the private sphere. Accordingly, in some cases, it is possible to trace the interesting path all the way from the study of nature to the finished vessel. We now come to the final section of my presentation. The same investigative approach towards nature that we saw in the analyzed drawings is already visible in the assignments for the school they both attended, Tainer School in Fokfina. Gad and Hegermann were strongly related to the school throughout their lives. They both received their education there, with Gade eventually serving as a teacher of geometric and stereometric drawing, and Effie being a member of the school's steering committee for 20 years in the early 1900s. The school was founded in 1876, and Fanny Gade was among its first students. And until 1888, when Royal Academy opened its doors for female students, it was the only place in Copenhagen where women could acquire any form of artistic education. But the school was more than that. Unlike the academy, it focused on practical skills that could be used in industrial design. Among the basic courses were several drawing courses, geometric, perspective, architectural, ornamental drawing, and study of relief including shading, and studies from nature. The more practical courses offered by the school included painting on porcelain, modeling in clay or wax, engraving, wood carving. The school has educated porcelain painters from the very beginning. As early as 1877, in a communication printed by the school steering committee, ceramics painting is listed as one of the possible career paths for the graduates of the school. The porcelain factories were a popular choice among women seeking employment and economic independence. In 1918, the women's magazine Voe Dame, Our Ladies, published an article on the employment of women at the Copenhagen porcelain factories. I quote, to paint on porcelain, that is the dream and the aim that many young girls work towards. The porcelain attracts them with its shiny whiteness and its fine, harmonious colors. They think this job must be the most delightful in the world. To come to one of the factories, that is, the Royal Porcelain Manufactory or Bingo Grondale, it is the aim for the young female students here uh, at the design school in town." End of quote. It is interesting to note that while the first female painter was employed by the Royal Person Factory in 1868, already towards the end of the 19th century, the painting in blue, the style that would be so strongly associated with Denmark, became mainly a female profession. By 1918, the Royal Factory and Aluminia employed together between four and 500 women, among which 70 to 80 female painters worked in the underglaze painting department. This department, which I would like to stress, 
like any other department decorate, uh, like any other department of porcelain decorating, in fact required their mostly female employees to have completed a full education in a design school. Fanny Gades and Effie Hegman Lindenkroner's employment in Bingo Krondale led the foundation for the underglaze painting department at the factory. That will become an entire business unit of an enterprise to be uniquely female dominated. Let me conclude by saying that Fanny Gade and Effie Hegemann Lindenkroner were two artists that, while working for a big commercial company at the turn of the century, managed to develop individual and highly rec recognizable forms of artistic expression. Unique and costly vases, individually hand modeled and pierced, painted with underglaze colors, constituted Gade's and Hegemann's signature works. A meticulous, a meticulous study of Danish nature provided with them with a wide range of decorative motifs. Educated in the first Danish school for industrial designers, the two artists are also examples of independent, self-supporting women, as well as members of avant-garde in turn of the century Danish underglaze painted porcelain. Thank you very much.